Hello, I'm Larry Berkelhammer. I'm here with Dr. Eric Pepper, a world authority on psychophysiological self-regulation. We're going to be discussing the value of doing body scans as a way to detect very early signs of illness that are too early to even pick up on medical tests. So I would like to ask you, Eric, first I want to thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. I would like to ask you about this. Um, I've trained with some people in meditation centers where they use body scanning for the purpose of developing awareness. I've trained with people like a colleague of yours, Ira Rosenberg, another psychophysiologist who used body scan to detect early prodromes, early very subtle signs. So I'd like to get your opinion on this and what, how does this work? How is it possible to do a body scan to detect something that medical tests won't yet even pick up? Body scans, in a way what you're talking about is sort of connecting or feeling somehow your interior of your body mm -hmm. in some ways. And if I look at it, if one does any ritual at all, whatever that is, if I do a daily practice where I take 20 minutes or so and I, te I tend to my body without too much effort and yet hold a gentle focus there and if my brain goes away, bring it back, bring it back, I'm doing really a couple of things. I'm learning to hold passive attention. I'm learning to just be present. And it is a skill which also affects my health in other places. Because when, when big emotional upsets occur, I have developed that muscle in a way in my brain to say, I can let go. I don't have to keep focusing on that. I can go back to being centered. We live in a disturbing 24 seven world where time and time again, we're being pulled in this direction, that direction. Mm -hmm. And I need time to go to a place of centeredness, mm -hmm. a place of calm or peace. And body scan can have that part. So now when I had scanned myself and I'm just with myself, I'm doing it also without judgment, which is the most important part. Normally, if I feel pain, I go, oh my God, what this? In a body scan, in fact, you don't do that. It's just there, that was just a thought, and you keep scanning it. And when you passively attend to your body, what often will happen is you will enhance blood flow. Mm -hmm. And that also is really all the work of autogenic training, yep. which really is a kind of body scan in which you sit quietly and you would say, my right arm is heavy, my right arm is warm, blah, blah, blah. Right. More We're increasing and more. blood flow in doing that. And what you can see exquisitely when you attend passively without trying, but you're still present, then often all of a sudden the blood vessels dilate. Mm -hmm. And we know when, right. in most cases, when there's an increase in blood flow, healing is more rapid. You know, one of the problems with people getting diabetic ulcers or other things, when non-healing, is that the blood flow has been compromised. The nutrients aren't getting to the distal points. Correct. Uh, <coughs> and so in the same yeah. way when I go through my body, if I feel real peaceful, I'm starting to learn my terrain interior in a way, a sense of feeling. And then when something is wrong, something going on of an illness, then when I go inside, it feels different. And I would say I would trust that. And the key is how can I listen to that without then doing that next hypochondriacal jump? Yeah. Oh my God, what is wrong? No, if I can now be peaceful, then I can still use that information and go to a health professional to have it checked out. Yeah. That is the critical right. part. So it's never an it's not in opposition to it. It's really we're working conjointly together. I make an observation and I want to find out and check it. It is clear that by very kind of passive attention, we can gain, gain remarkable control. And in a way, that's what imagery does. But now you're talking about two things here. So one of them is being able to, because we become so familiar with our bodies through doing this daily body scan that we detect things very early and of course every disease is more easily treatable especially cancers if it's detected in the very early stages but the other thing you're talking about is now control that to, to me seems like another thing you're totally right mm -hmm. there were two components one is almost a kind of awareness the something is shifting mm -hmm. and the second is in that shifting 
I can also potentially use almost half imagery or biofeedback techniques, which is a way by which you can get information what's happening, by which you can now redirect or change. And in fact, there's very good evidence we can do this. You know, with appropriate information, you can warm your hands six or eight degrees. Now it's very easy, when, <clears throat> once we've practiced, it's very easy to warm our hands, warm our feet, to improve circulation. Um, but what about other things? Well, possibly it's the use of imagery. It's clear when my students do this. If I have back pain, let's say, I, could, I may see this as a knife right in my back. Yep. And if in the imagery, maybe I could see that knife being pulled out. Or I have one of my client students, it was really a student, who had severe back pain. When he looked inside, it felt like a brick wall. His healing imagery was taking these bricks away. Mm -hmm. And then in that process, because he got so quiet in a way, non-judgmental, all of a sudden he had an image occur that his back was like a bamboo, should be like bamboo. And what it meant to him in his half hypnagogic state, that he should be more free mm -hmm. and loose, which meant being free, looser in his thinking process and way of being. When he did that, yes. his back pain went from a nine daily to about a one. He's changed the attribution, and in changing the attribution, changing the imagery, and he changes his behavior. He, his emotional distress is less. Yes. So he's changed his behavior. He's, he's lowered his emotional distress, which lowers physiological stress, which puts the body in a more homeostatic state, more conducive to healing. Yes. Or the, uh, and the other way you could say we listen to our language in the world. You know, I think we need to honor some of these linguistic statements. It doesn't always mean it's right. You know. A pain in the neck. Mm -hmm. Who is the pain in the neck? Now remember, sometimes the pain in the neck can be because I had a car crash. Yeah. So, however, be open to those possible attributes. Yeah. The error most of us do is when something happens, we say, because I have a back pain because I had a car crash or because I lifted this box. Without asking the question, that is one possibility. And if one is more open, there may be other ones. Maybe I had a fight with my partner, then I lifted the box. Or maybe, maybe we don't even need to know why it is. Maybe we can just tune into the pain and let it just be pain. Yes, but that is very, we love to have reasons, you know, mm -hmm. because what a reason does, it, it stops our ambiguity, our right. questioning. Right. And, and you're ambiguity asking is then like, difficult for us. You're asking that kind of yeah. openness that you're really saying not to have an answer, means I must have a trust in the universe right, and in right. self. Yes, right. And so few of us at times have that deep trust that we can just say, it's okay yeah, of course. not to know. Right. I want to ask you about a third thing regarding uh, body scans. When I, I trained with Jean Ochterberg and she trained us that you can actually use specific images to bring about specific physiologic responses. Uh, you can change specific physiologic processes through going to a certain place in the body and altering that. What do you know about that? That's what we teach many people. Very similar process. I call these self-healing imagery. Uh, to me, there needs to be a parallel or a kind of similarity, but it can be, it doesn't have to be biological, it can be abstract. As if our um, autonomic nervous system which used to be called the imaginary nervous system, really is modulated with our imagination. Mm -hmm. And so if I can imagine healing, but it's not just imagining out there, it's almost like a felt sense of doing, it makes a remarkable physiological change. And there are infinite number of stories, patient stories, where you can show that change. And if you want to go back to science, then the simplest ones where you can really document this is more directly like in autogenic training. You imagine your hands warming and they warm. Well, the autogenic part, the uh, uh, vasodilating, uh, opening up blood vessels to increase circulation, that's actually pretty basic. I'm more interested in, let's say someone is detecting uh, some dysplastic cell, some, some type of cell that will be turning cancerous later on. Is it, do you think it's possible uh, by body scanning to detect these cells and then to use the mind to actually shut these cells down, shut the machinery of these cells down so they stop reproducing cancer cells? Well, the way I would say it is, I think some people 
can have a sense by scanning that something is wrong, whether it's, they may not have a label for it, what it exactly is. And they can do other imagery techniques by which they can mobilize their immune system mm -hmm. to which can be supportive and efficacious. There are lots of case examples where patients have done this. You know, so I, to me, it is not a doubt. At the same time, remember when we think of cancer, it's, by the time we often recognize cancer, it has grown quite a bit. It's millions of cells, even when it's subclinical. And so right. I would say always do this in conjunction with, a, you know, do get yourself tested. Because yeah. self healing techniques, in my experience, often are somewhat slow. And if cancer is growing very rapidly, yeah. even if you're starting to slow the cancer growth, you may be dead before the self-healing technique is working. I mean, you say self-healing is slow, and yet that night, uh, I had told you. Uh, I totally agree. About a time one night when I overcame the flu just by taking on another persona, and I was all better in two hours. And what I wish is that we can study you and package that, yeah. and that we can teach that to every patient. Unfortunately, I've tried it. Numerous times over the last 25 years, I haven't been able to replicate it. And I think the reason is trying is not the same as Do believing. No, it's not, it's not even believing. Believing is something which, which till proven that it works. It's really knowing. And the distinction yeah. is you have a known past experience. You just haven't figured out a way how to get back in that same state. Right. And that is the critical part, mm -hmm. you know, and I look at many of these people, it's like Robert Gorder in our book on fighting cancer. He himself had testicular cancer, stage three, stage four, in the night, many years ago, and he then treated himself with a kind of hyperthermia and stuff like this, or really Iscador, unimportant, non-traditional non treatment, and he got better. And there was no scientific evidence that that can cure cancer, and yet, he got better. Yes. And yeah. you know, but there are many factors for this. We don't really know all of them. Right. And that's, I think, to be really honest to patients and to, to patients and to Western medicine. Remember, you found it hard to repeat your experience. Mm -hmm. And so as a physician, you want to try to do something that is reliable. And that's ideally why we do clinical trials. Yeah, of course. I, however, I want to say, do not throw your case out ask how, you know, continually be open to ask, what can I do to the person to have them evoke that same experience? This is why we should be studying, let's say, for example, in pancreatic cancer, not just study the 95% the who died, study the 5% who survived. What did they do differently? What did they do? Or what was done to them? Or what, did they, what experiences did they have that led to their remarkable recovery? Correct. And that to me is where we should be spending a lot of time. And yeah. the other part is we should be spending much more time reducing the cancer burdens in our environment. Well, that course. includes yeah. our foods. Our That's exposure. another topic. <laughs> Total other topics. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Yeah.